from Blue Sky Bio, and I'd like to welcome everybody who's joining us tonight. We have a fantastic turnout. You should be able to hear me clearly through your computer speakers. If you're having any trouble, you could dial in to the 888 number that's up in the bottom right of your screen. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, you could type them into the chat box in the bottom right, and we'll deal with them as we go along. Um, you should be receiving a CE credit for the webinar to your email address within uh, one week of the webinar session. If you don't receive it, then uh, please be in touch with us. But you should be getting that sent directly to your email address. The webinar should uh, will show up recorded on the Blue Sky Bio website within a few days of the session, barring any technical uh, issues. And if anybody wants to share it or watch it, they could go to bio.com and be able to uh, watch the webinar. Uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Cindy Bullock, the President of Information Dental Technology, who's going to be discussing some advanced applications of guided surgery. Cindy? Thank you, Michael. Um, so I'm, I thank you for all showing up tonight. I'm really excited. Um, I hope you guys are all excited as I am about CAD CAM surgical guides and CT sur surgery. Um, what we're going to be going over um, is just, you know, the advanced applications of that and a lot of ways that we can build surgical guides and alternatives from radiographic guides, that first step. Um, and so I'm actually from IDT, Information Dental Technology, and there's a lot of different things that we do for the dental community in regards to integrating CT and CBCT technology into the dental office. Um, we've partnered with a lot of different imaging centers and mobile units across the country and to help get that technology into the office as well as dental labs to bring everything um, together and have a little bit better uh, communication. But tonight we'll focus on the CT surgical guides that we fabricate. I actually got really excited about doing CT surgical guides about five, six years ago when seeing the benefits of cone beam technology in the dental industry, but then the surgical guide actually takes that advantage and applies it directly clinically. Um, over the years, I've seen a lot of ways where this technology can have its variables and, and its strengths, and so I'm going to kind of go over a lot of that as well, how we can make the technology work um, to the most accurate advantage that we can get. Um, and some of the variables that I've seen is, you know, one of the biggest ones is that radiographic guide that you build at the beginning of the process as far as getting a surgical guide. Um, another is, you know, I'll go over some of the alternative options. The clinical translation is a huge surgical variable. You know, if you're not used to looking at the CT or how that's going to translate clinically, then your surgery is not going to go as planned. Um, so, and then advanced clinical applications as well. So over the years, there's a lot of different companies out there, a lot of different software companies that utilize, um, that have utilized this type of technology to bring that direct clinical application um, to, the, to the surgery. And these are just a bunch of the radiographic guides that I've seen over the years. You'll see there's one with a barium mixture in the crowns. There's one with a giant X. There's got a perch markers. Um, there's a lot of different ways that this technology has been utilized over the years, and there's great objectives and reasons for utilizing these types of technology, um, but the technology is pretty much the same. Any program or software that you use, it's the same. It just is, depends on if you utilize it the proper way to get that accurate result. Um, so one of the really common ones, um, probably more common several years ago than now, is the barium mixture in the crowns, and it was an 8 to 10 percent barium mixture in the crowns for the radiographic guide. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the, the process of obtaining a CT surgical guide, it starts typically with a radiographic guide that's built from a lab, and then you scan it at a scan center and get a CT of that and then you put it in a software program to implant the case and get a surgical guide. So this is the first step after you take it and, and you build a radiographic guide. Um, and you'll see here, this is one where you have an 8 to 10 percent mixture of barium in the, uh, the crowns where you're going to be placing the implant, and you want to see that ideal tooth location radiographically, and so it's a radiopaque substance. And uh, what we're looking at here is a cross-sectional view. And down below is this little quarter section of a pan. 
and it's a tondim pan. And tondim is, you know, we take slices, so it's similar to slicing a loaf of bread. Um, you have these two blue lines, this yellow line, and then the two red lines in, in that panoramic view at the lower right-hand corner. And each of those, it's just a, a loaf, like slice of bread. And you pull it out and then lay it flat, and above that is the slice that you're looking at. So we're looking at the yellow line that slices through that mesial aspect of the barium tooth. And then as you go down, it slices through the distal root tip. Um, and if we look in the slice view, here is this, you know, this bright density, this bright white represents the mesial portion of that barium tooth. And then down here, this density is that distal root tip. Um, looking at it more, on this side, this uh, cortical outline here, this is the lingual plate. And then on this side is the buccal plate. And you'll notice that we have significant bone loss at the, at the crest. You know, you can kind of see the lingual crest at the top, but as you go around, you see that there is significant buccal bone loss at the crest. Um, and so, you know, this was a scan. This, is, this technology is utilized because when you place an implant in the edentulous area, you're able to see the trajectory of the implant coming through the restorative space. And that barium tooth is the ideal tooth location. So when you're treatment planning, it gives you a reference point or, you know, an area where you can actually see that. So this particular case, uh, we took another CT scan, but we removed the actual radiographic guide with the barium in it. And it was the same patient, the same day, the same CT scanner, and we took another slice. And you can see here's that yellow line, and it's cutting right through that, that tip there of, that, of the tooth. And here's that density showing the tooth. And what you notice in this x-ray is that on the buccal aspect of that cortical plate and at the crest, there's no bone loss. It's a completely different view because what we're looking at in the first view with the barium tooth is with cone beam, we get volumetric shadowing, or it's it's kind of like if you took a picture, you know, someone takes a picture of you with a camera and you've got, you know, you can't see anything but a black square. And that's kind of similar to what we're seeing that's happening in the CT scan is that you have that bright density and behind that you have that shadow. So there is anatomy behind it. We just can't see it because it's a still image of that bright density. Um, and so it's giving the illusion that there is bone loss on the crestal buccal aspect when there's actually not. Uh, another disadvantage to having barium mixture in a cone beam scan or any type of radiopaque substance in a cone beam scan is we get what's called cone beam burnout. And cone beam burnout, you'll notice in the first slice that the trabecular pattern isn't that clear. It's not that well defined. Uh, and, and the cortical plate is a little bit dull. It's not that bright white. And that's because when you take a cone beam image, you're seeing that entire arch. And so any any type of um, barium mixture or radiopaque substance, it's going to affect the quality of the entire scan. It's not going to affect just that one area. It's the entire scan. Um, whereas with CT, it's fan beam, and um, it only affects that particular area. So what we see here is two cases. One, the first one that I showed you, that one, you know, it's great restoratively. Um, you can place the implant where you want it to be, and you can see how it's going to come through the restorative space. But surgically, it's it's terrible because you can't even tell what the crested bone looks like. The medullar bone space is distorted. And a, a, and a, a problem with that as well is that the cortical outline of the nerve is going to be harder to see in a scan that has a lot of radiopaque substance in it because of that cone beam burnout. So it's great restoratively, but surgically, the second scan without the radiographic guide, without the barium mixture, is much more diagnostic. We're going to see the canal. We're going to be able to trace the canal really well. And then, you know, the medullar bone space and the true shape of that crustal bone is going to be related in that CT scan or that cone beam scan. The problem with that, it, is, it doesn't satisfy the restorative needs. We can't see the ideal tooth location. Um, so you're just kind of, you know, we have one or the other. There's, there's no happy medium there. So we have a technique that we utilize that allows us to get both the surgical advantage and the restorative advantage. And we do that by building a proper radiographic guide. 